Hello everyone, Alexander Flores here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use AWS Cognito inside of a React.js application. So I'm on the AWS Cognito dashboard right now, and we have to first create a user pool. To do that, we have to click on Manage User Pools, and then Create a User Pool at the top right. So first we have to name our user pool. This will likely be the name of your application. In this case, I'll just name it Tutorial. Next we'll click on step through settings. So first we have to decide how our users are going to be identified, either through username or email. We'll go ahead and click on email like most other websites. Here we see a lot of different attributes. These are attributes that are attached to each account and these check boxes are saying that this attribute is required to create an account. So if a website is required to create an account for your application, you can check this. For this tutorial, I'll leave everything default. You can also add custom attributes. However, I won't be getting into this in this tutorial. Click on next step. You can specify your password security strength. I recommend keeping everything default and checked. You can also specify that only admins can create users or more commonly that users can sign themselves up. You can set temporary passwords to expire after a certain amount of days if set up by an admin account. We'll leave everything as is on this page. Click on next. We won't be going over multi-factor authentication in this tutorial and we'll also keep how they recover their account as the default setting. However, you can select whatever works best for your application. Scrolling down, the only thing we want to verify is the email because we're not going to be capturing phone numbers in this tutorial and we won't be using any SMS messaging at all, so I'm not gonna be creating a role. We'll just simply click on next step. Here you get to specify your email settings. So you can set your from and to email address if you have emails attached to your SES account. You also can specify to use SES instead of Cognito when sending emails. Using Cognito is fine. However, there are some limitations that you can read through on these links here. Scrolling down, we get to customize the different verification types. We can send a four digit pin or a link. Notice that the variable inside the text field is required on both. So if you're selecting link, you must supply this. This is where the link will be inserted, or you can select code and this is where the pin will be used. Scrolling down, we won't be customizing any invitation messages because we won't be using that. Click on next step. Here we can add a tag, however that's not needed. Click on next step. I'll be going over these options further in other tutorials. For now, we can just select no and click on next step. Here we can create an app client. I'm going to name my client website. Alternatively, this could be a mobile app or something similar. We do not want to generate a client secret. We will deselect that. We'll leave everything else as default. And this right here allows us to edit the attribute read and write permissions. So these are all the attributes that we saw on step one. You can allow this app client to be able to read or write them here. And if you did create custom attributes, you would see them here as well. Finally, we're gonna create the app client by clicking this button, and then we can click on next. Cognito allows us to customize the fine details of every single piece of the user experience through Lambda functions. I won't be going through this in this tutorial, however in future videos I will be covering these. So we can simply leave it as is and click on next. Here you can just review the, the settings we chose and click on create pool. So note the user pool ID can be found on the general settings tab. We'll need that soon. Also you can go to app clients on the left and you can find the app client ID. We will also need that soon. The last thing we have to do in the dashboard is set up a domain name. You don't have to actually have a real domain name purchased because you can simply use this domain that they provide. In my case, I'm going to select worn off keys. You can select whatever your project name is or whatever name you choose. Then just simply click check availability. The domain is available, so I will save changes. Now we're going to be working on the React application. The first thing we have to do is import Cognito user pool from an Amazon NPM package. The name of the package is Amazon Cognito Identity JS. You can install it through this command this command will also be in the description so you can easily copy it. Now we're gonna create an object that holds some information about our user pool. This object will have two properties. The first is the user pool ID, the second being the client ID. We can find these on the dashboard. To find the client ID, simply click on the app clients and then copy from here. Paste it into your pool data object. Next is the user pool ID, which can be found under the general settings tab right at the top paste that into your pool data, and then we're gonna create a user pool object. We'll soon use this object to actually create our account. For now, we're gonna create a simple form. 
we're going to create an on submit function that simply prevents the default event. Inside this function, we will soon create our account once we have the rest of the form done. Before we finish the form, we need to have access to state. And because we're in a functional component, we need to import the use state hook. Next, we can use the state hook to create our email and password variables. Now we have access to our email variable, our password variable, a function to set our email, and a function to set our password. We can now add in some inputs to our form. So the value for our first input will be our email variable, and the on change event will simply set the email equal to the new email, which we gain access to through event target value. Similarly, we do the same thing with the password. Finally, we need a submit button. This will actually submit the form and invoke the on submit function. So in here, we're going to actually create our user. This function takes in five arguments. Only three are relevant. The first one is email. The second one is the password. The third one will be an empty array. The fourth one is null. The fifth is a callback, which will contain error and data parameters. I'll explain these two missing arguments in another tutorial. It's not relevant for this video. Inside here, we simply just want to console log if everything went well or not. Let's save our file and try out our app. Here we see our basic form, the first field being our email. Let's go ahead and enter a test email. Next, we'll enter a password. This password will not conform with the password policies we set up whenever we created our Cognito user pool. As you can see, it does not contain an uppercase character, so this should throw an error. Click on sign up. Here we see that error. You can use this error to display a meaningful message to a user about how to fix the problem. Let's go ahead and capitalize password and then sign up again. Here we see a user object. We have a lot of information here, but the notable parts would be the username, which is our email, user confirmed, and the user sub. The user sub is a UUID that Cognito generates for us. If we head over to the dashboard and go to users and groups, we can refresh to the top right and we see our user is now there. Clicking on it, we see additional information. That's it for this tutorial. If this video helped you, please consider liking and subscribing. We also have a Worn Off Keys Discord server. A link will be in the description. The source code for this video will also be in the description in a GitHub repo. Thanks for watching.